considerations in producing satellite to smartphone communication. Recently, the company Link has been able to conduct direct satellite to smartphone communication. While the article only references the capacity for downlink to the phone, what difficulties must be considered in a system capable of two-way communication with a phone compared to a typical ground station? Some thoughts of my own. Adhering to existing smartphone communication standards. Weak phone antenna gain for uplink. Maintaining constant contact with phones. There are many conflicting requirements. Gain of the antenna. Size of antenna. Directionality of antenna. Bandwidth. To make antenna efficient you want it to have a narrow beam to direct most of the energy to the satellite. This implies your antenna will be highly directional. For a handheld device it is almost impossible to aim the beam reliably when the device is held by an unstable platform your hand, plus the satellite might also be moving. This is why Iridium went with an omnidirectional antenna and it's a pretty big one. Because of the omnidirectional antenna the gain is relatively low, plus the limited power of handheld device, Iridium is forced to use a very low orbit. But you can still use Iridium when you are moving around. With 5G and MMW on the way, things changes a little bit. Thanks to the advancement of RF technology and short wavelength of MMW, right now it's actually quite feasible to implement directional antenna and beam forming electronic beam steering so 3 is somewhat less of a problem because active satellite tracking is possible now. This new development is reflected by SpaceX's Starlink project. A distinguishing feature of Starlink is the usage of beamforming to allow for a highly directional antenna, enabling high bandwidth service. But if you look at Starlink's receiver the antenna is still 10x of what I'd like to see on a handheld device. In some way I think it's worse than Iridium because it uses a disk antenna for 2D beam forming, rather than an omnidirectional pole. If you shrink the antenna 10x then you need to bump the frequency 10x into the 300 GHz range, which is more like infrared laser than microwave. I really don't see that feasible for commercial end users in the next decade or two. I guess in the near and far future we won't improve very far from Iridium and Starlink. For highly resilient low bandwidth application, e.g. text and voice you use Iridium in the handheld form. For high bandwidth usages you place a satellite internet hotspot on a decently stable platform, of the size of a pizza box, then pass through the connection to the user device via Wi-Fi. I'd say this is good enough.